God talks about how you are a new creation in Christ, a new creation. I was studying both of the new words or those two words. I was studying the meaning of those words. And they both have a significant meaning that's very profound, which I'll share with you in these couple minutes right here. And it'll be shocking to you. Because there was re a reason why the Lord said that you are a new creation, which means that this is in the blood, the covenant, the new covenant, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit has a lot to do with this new creation. Now, Adam, the first Adam was converted from new creation to old creation. Remember that. So the second Adam became the old creation on the cross so that you could become the new creation. So there's a significance to the new creation that is very special. And there was a switching that had to occur. The first Adam was the new creation. He became the old creation. And that explains God's anger. God's anger realized that this new creation has become old via a decision. And that's why the Bible talks about the old man. I want you to write that down. Remember this because it's going to be so profound. I'm going to share this as quickly. I want you to remember that the Bible talks about a sinner as being an old man. It says the old man of sin. Why do you think that it says the old man of sin? Because guess what, people of God? In the Greek, I couldn't find the word new in the Hebrew. I found the word new in the Greek and one of the definitions was young. Listen to me, people of God. This is why King Jesus had to die young. Because he was releasing new. And new in the word, in the, in the new, the word, one of the definitions of new in the Greek is young. So King Jesus had to die young. My God, because, if, oh, my God, he was releasing back the new creation. That's why Adam did not come on the scene as just a baby. He came on the scene as a young man. <laughs> he, he came on the scene as a young man. And saints, I want to say this to you, that when Adam came to this earth, he was 30 years old. And oh my God, he was 30 years old. And this is why Joseph and Jesus, I'm not talking about Joseph, the man that was with Mary. I'm talking about Joseph that came out of the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That Joseph that had a prosperity anointing on him in Genesis chapter 39. I want you to see that Joseph, that's why him and Jesus both had significant significant occurrences of dominion and ministry happened for them at the age of 30. And I'm speaking to you via revelation. Everybody in your life, if you think about it, at the age of 30, God dealt with you heavy about a quickening, about a turnaround, about a repentance, about a surrender. Even you may be 70 or 60 years old. If you track back at where you was when you was 30, maybe God was telling you not to continue in that job. Maybe God was telling you not to continue in that city. There was something the Lord was speaking to you and you either ignored it or you paid attention to it. 
And if you ignored it, it created something in your life where there was a temporary delay. Because 30 is a significant. There are two significant ages that I can tell you that the age 30, the age 33 58 is another significant age. There are many different significant ages. 21, there's many different significant ages. But Adam came on the scene as a young man. So when Adam sinned, he went from young to old. And you got to stick with me on here. He went from young to old because here's what happens. Even though according to his age, he was young, he stepped into old because he was no longer a new creation. So new creation, the word new in the Greek means young. One of the definitions is young because guess what happens? That's why no matter how old you are, according to your age, God still calls you young. And that's why Psalm says that he'll renew your youth like the what? The eagles. Now you know why he said he'll renew your youth. Because since you are now a, a, a new creation, the new creation means that you are young. The word new means you're young. And so that's why God will not let you get old in your mindset, in your presentation, in how you feel. He'll renew your youth because that's what new means in the Greek. Now, since then, another word in the Greek for new is fresh. So saints in Psalm 92, when David said, I think it's Psalm 92 verse 10, when David said that I shall be anointed with fresh oil, when he said fresh oil, what he was saying, I shall be anointed with a new realm of teaching. Oh my God. He was saying, God going to teach me new things because remember the anointing is the all and the anointing teaches you all things. And the fact that it was fresh all that he talked about, it was a new anointing, meaning that God was going to start teaching him new things so that his mind wouldn't go back to old ways. If you look at your life, the only reason that you not who you used to be or where you used to was located at is because you're learning new things. So David was saying that I shall be anointed with fresh oil, which really translates new anointing. And the new in the Greek represents fresh. So he was saying, I shall be anointed with new teachings. So David understood that the way that I will never go back or never be something that I'm not supposed to be is if I get taught new things. So the reason why God pits the prophet, the apostle in your life is to teach you new things so that you won't go back to your old Now, the word creation is powerful. And one of the definitions for creation in the Hebrew is nature. And so, saints, when it says that you are a new creation, one of the words for creation in the Hebrew is Nature. So new creation mean new nature. So now the father is saying the way that hatred was your first nature, now love is your first nature. 
See, the new creation is powerful because now it goes in reverse. You know how you hear born of sin and shaped in iniquity. Now you're born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. So watch this now. Now the word of God is your first nature. So whatever the word says, that's going to be the first thing that you think about when you're functioning as a new creation. So when you're in a situation financially, you're not going to think about playing the lottery. The first thing you're going to think about is sowing a seed because this is of the the new creation. This is the nature of the new creation. When you are in a financial situation or when you are of the kingdom, you sow. When you're in a situation where you can be bitter, your first nature will not be bitterness. The first nature will be forgive. See, the new creation is where God's mind is the first thing that you think about to react to a situation. It's the first thing that you grab. The first thing you grab when you're hurt, the first thing you grab when you're distracted is not another distraction or another thing that can bring pain. It is dominion, decreeing. Your first nature is to decree a thing. The first nature now is not to be a slave, but to be a master. Are you catching this? New creation, creation in the Hebrew, one of the definitions is nature. So now God's saying, I'll give you a new nature. So now what was first instinct for you? I switch it with how I do things now. So watch the first man, Adam, he ate. He ate. The second Adam is tempted after 40 days, 40 nights, and, and he refused to eat. Why is the first Adam and the second Adam doing different things? Because we're seeing which nature is at work. The first Adam ate because that's the nature of the old man, sin. The second man refused to eat because that is the new nature. So you have an anointing that refuses to eat from the table of the devil. That's why when someone comes to you with wrong doctrine or wrong interpretation of the word or wrong counsel or wrong instruction or wrong routes or wrong teaching, that's why your spirit resists it because you're of the new creation. My God, your nature in the past would have considered it. It would have entertained it. It would have thought about it. Probably is right. Probably is correct. But now you are a new creation. Your nature is now new. Now, one of the words in the Hebrew for creation also is formation. And saints, one thing that I want you to catch about formation and that is that when there a formation, it means that there is order. If you have a formation, it means that you're, you have order. The reason why people have grocery stores and there's owls, because those owls is a formation and those owls create order. And if you are looking for a certain food, you go on the owl because you know that that owl has a formation of that food that you're looking for. So saints, not only does formation represent order, but formation represent clarity making things easy to locate. So the fact that the new creation, that one of the words of creation in the Hebrew is formation, it shows you that now you're going to be living a life that's full of order. It's going to be order. Not only is it going to be order, but there's going to be clarity. You're not going to be like Martha trying to find out what the will of God is. Or you're not going to be like the, the Pharisees and scribes searching for what God really wants. Now you're going to have the exact word 
of the living God being released to you for you to know, for you to understand, for you to comprehend. Are you catching this? This amazing to me, man. I wasn't even going to get on here, but the Lord said, you got this fresh word. I'm talking to you. Talk about it. And see, I don't worry about losing words because I got so much words in me that I'm going to be preaching the word in eternity. So this really for you. This this not for me. So saints, formation is what being a new creation. The fact that he said that you're a new creation, it means that you got a new formation. I pitch you in a new owl. I, I pitch you around new food. I pitch you around new order. That's why when you listen to people talking about, hey, you don't need no prophet. You don't need no apostle. They don't exist no more. Well, you can go to God yourself. See, that sounds great if you're underneath the old nature, if you're underneath an old creation. But the fact that you you are a new creation that mean that you receive the new order, you receive the new formation, you receive the new clarity where God is telling you exactly what he's looking for, exactly what he wants from you. Now, saints, I want to say this, too, and this is so powerful to me, is that one of the words is creation, because guess what? Uh, uh, for creation is formation in the Hebrew, because look at this. The Bible talks about having a form of godliness. And so that form of godliness empowers you to resist the true power of God, the true anointing. So the fact that this creation word means in the Hebrew formation, it shows you that when you become a new creation, God is going to help you never to go back to the formula that you was operating in before you said yes to who God really. You, oh, my God. It means that you're not going to go back to the format, the formula, the way that you were operating in the system that you was operating in religiously. You're not going to go back to it because now your formation is new. Your form is new. And see, saints, do you know what the form of godliness came out of? It came out of people not receiving the form because God formed man. He formed man. And so when man refused how God formed him, now the form of godliness was able to take root. <laughs> 